Hello everybody and welcome back to part two of Can GPR Identify Leaks Within a Pipe? I am Dan Bigman, the GPR professor at LearnGPR.com and uh, welcome you know, to, to, to this part two. In part one, we went over how do you identify a pipe um, to see it in two-dimensional profile view, right? To look into the ground surface and see that as two dimensions. So if you have not checked out part one, go ahead and do that now. Um, but for part two, I'm going to show you how you can potentially locate a pipe in 3D. So let's say that you have a pipe, and you're looking at this now top down. Okay, so sort of an aerial overview. That's your pipe. All right. And let's say your pipe kind of goes this way. Okay. Now, in order to identify the leak within the pipe, so let's say this is your survey area. All right. You're going to set up a grid. Now, within that grid, what's going to happen is you're going to collect a transect going one way, right? you're going to collect another one coming back the other way, generally, and you're going to continue to do that all the way across. And whether you go this direction, this direction, you can go, you know, it doesn't matter how you set it up. But, but the point is, by setting it up this way, you're going to identify the location of this but what you need to do when you're trying to identify the leak in the pipe is you have to run water through that pipe. So if it's leaking and the water's been turned off, you need to go back and turn it on. And then you probably have to wait for water to come out through the leak, wherever it is. So let's say the leak is right here. You have to wait for water to come out of that leak for some time so you can pick up the distortion in the pipe but more importantly, you can pick up the, uh, uh, the contrast between the water-saturated soil and the surrounding soil. All right? So what happens here is, as you do a grid, you can then create time slices. And if you don't know what a time slice is, or if you don't know what an isosurface is, or uh, understand how GPR data is developed in three dimensions, you've got to go to learngpr.com and um, sign up for our GPR Basics course, because in there we talk about how to do 3D modeling uh, uh, for GPR. And so what happens is you create a time slice. Now within that time slice, what ends up happening is below the ground surface, in the soil, you're going to get very few reflection events. There are very few high amplitude reflection events. But in the water saturated area, you're going to get a high amplitude reflection. And so you can see this then, sort of in a heat map, where you're going to have, right? So now, what you're going to, going to, going to basically have is, um, let's say blue is no reflections, right? You're going to get blue okay, in your heat map. And then, let's say red is where you're getting your reflections. You're going to get, I'm going to take our water out. You're going to get red, right? You're going to get a higher amplitude reflection where the leak uh, is, right? You're going to get a higher amplitude reflection where the water has saturated that ground, uh, you know, subsurface where it's saturated that soil. It's going to be, it's going to have a contrast to the surrounding soil, and you're going to get a high amplitude reflection off of it. All right, so that's what you're going to see. The neat thing about this is it can also tell you by doing three-dimensional views which direction the leak's plume is going in. This isn't just for water pipes. This is if you have a fuel tank that's leaked. It happens all the time. You can try to identify the plume as well. So what you eventually get is a reflection off of the extent, the boundary of that plume, showing you which direction it's moving. That is how you would do this in three dimensions. You can transfer this into an isosurface uh, uh, map, which would show you then where the leak was occurring, uh, and then it would also show you um, where you know, the plume is as, as, as well. If you did this multiple times, you could potentially see how fast the leak is traveling through the subsurface. So that would, in, in a sense, be 4D. If you did 3D, if you did it at 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, um, after the water was turned on, it would show you the spread. And so what you may get then eventually, right, is over time, mm -hmm. Okay. You may get so let's say that, that was you know T one uh, you know T zero. Now I'm losing my mind. Let's say that was 20 minutes after you turn the water on, maybe 40 minutes after you turn the water on. 
right? This now is your heat map, and you can see it's spreading and expanding in a certain direction. And if you know that it took 20 minutes to get here, 40 minutes to get here, you can calculate the rate at which that uh, leak is moving. So I hope that this was helpful. If there's somebody else who might be able to use this uh, or learn from it, please share this video around. We appreciate your attention as always. If you have not done so, go over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, and uh, sign up for our free training video. Uh, we have training videos on there, uh, um, variety of different topics, so go ahead and go there and put it in. Thank you so much, and we will see you on the next video.